My creature is a manticore. A manticore? Yep. Is that like already just a creature? Like yes. Oh, okay. It's a lion with a scorpion tail. Oh, so like a griffin, but not really? Yep. Cool. All right, so now I'm going to get rid of my text blocking sketch, right? And I'm going to try to just make the text look as strong as it can. And you see how the Tikor here, for man up Tikor, it's a little weak looking. So I'm going to play with that and try to strengthen it up. So what do I do to do that? I'm going to rasterize it now that I have it placed. And I'm going to select all the white space in it. So I'm going to use my magic wand and uncheck contiguous, select all the white, and then delete it. Right, so now it's just free floating. Right, what's nice about that, I can also do that for these. I don't really need to, but now I can actually, because they're not typefaces on a type tool, they are just pixels, I can play with layer styles on it. So if I double click, I'm going to add a stroke to it because I want to thicken it up. And I'm going to add a stroke to the outside, right, and expand it, or maybe to the center. There we go. And that feels like it holds up a lot better than not having it, right? I can also just modify the individual type setting just by using my lasso tool. For instance, if I wanted to make the T larger, I can just transform it separately than everything else. And I often like to do this with my type design, just make the first initials a little bit larger. And this can be informed by your, type, by your text blocking sketch. Right? Or you can kind of go off script with it. Maybe I want to make it a little bit smaller. Maybe I want to squeeze it a little. Hold down shift. Rotate it. So we're going to do all of this in Photoshop before we turn it into a vector. And this is called type setting. If I want to just work with this star a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to shrink the E a little bit. Remember, if you hold down shift with transforming, you can distort. And if you need to, you can always just warp your individual letters. If there's something you don't like about the typeface design. If the kerning's a little too wide, so this O, there's a lot of space with that O floating in it. So I'm going to expand it a little bit. Squeeze that kerning. So everything is kind of taking up a good amount of space. I'm still not quite happy with this T. So I'm going to try stretching it out a little bit at the top. That helps with the kerning. Latin type, Latin text, that's what these letters are, is really actually pretty flexible. You can do a lot with it. Okay, now 
I'm pretty happy with it for the next step. So the next step is turn on your white background, turn off your illustration so you just have the black, and then modify anything before we turn it into a vector. So I do not want this little drop shadow to be brought over. So I'm going to take that layer, which is here, rasterize it, and then very simply, I'm just going to use my magic wand with contiguous turned on, select these drop shadows, and get rid of them. I might have to expand my uh, tolerance on the magic wand. And I want to get rid of that little debris as well. So what else can I do? I can just use my lasso and clean this up. Now notice how blurry it is. That's because we took something that was a screen grab from Defont, and then we brought it up to a high poster resolution in size. So we see that pixelization. And so that's why the next step is to turn this into a vector. We don't have finished type design until it is vectorized. In the afternoon class, I'm going to teach this very differently using vector.com and using the type tools within vector.com. It's more limited, but it's all freeware. All right, so now, up oh, little fragment there. So just like when you did digital inking, and then we wanted to turn it into a vector, now I want to do that with this. And yeah, I can do it now. Okay, so there's my text. Now I'm going to save that just as what's called a test file. So I say save a copy, and I put test in front of it. This is transitional to the desktop as a JPEG. It can be a JPEG or a PNG. Just standard flattened image. Make sure you don't have anything turned on you don't want. Doesn't matter if you have the background turned on or not, it's going to come in. Now I open up Illustrator. And I'm going to open up that test file in Illustrator. So here's my test file open with Adobe Illustrator. I want to size it so it all shows up on the artboard. So I click it with the large selection tool and I hold down shift because I need to lock the proportions and I just make sure that all of my type shows up on the artboard. Next, I go to properties and I'm going to image trace it. I'm going to do black and white logo, and then I'm going to do advanced options, and I'm going to say ignore the color so that the white is not traced into a vector, only the black shapes. Then I look at it, and all of a sudden we no longer have any pixelization. Everything is a vector, and I can play with the settings if, it's, if I want to make it thicker or thinner or simpler, right? I might actually do this twice because I like what it does for the top, but I don't love what it's doing for the bottom. So I'm going to just lower the number of paths a little bit, just looking at the top. And that looks pretty good. And then when I'm happy with it, at least for the top, I'm going to say expand. Now it is a vector. And because it's a vector, I can modify it any way I like. Right. Now I don't like this bottom. What worked for the top didn't work as well for the bottom in my opinion. But I have some options. I could just bring in the bottom you know, I can open it up again in Illustrator. 
do. You can also just do this, drag and drop it in. Where is it? Huh. Maybe because it's the exact same name. Let me give it a slightly different name. Test 2. Open that with Illustrator. This will show you how those advanced options really matter. So now I have this one. It's already turned into a vector. And now I've brought it in again. I'm going to shift this so it's on the artboard. I'm going to go to Properties, Image Trace, Black and White Logo, Advanced Options, Ignore the color, so it's floating, you know, just like that. And now I'm going to set these settings so it looks good for this. And for that, I think I need to make it a little thinner, a little less precise, right? I need to play with the paths a little differently. Try to simplify it here. We're getting there. Okay, and that looks a little bit better. So I can expand it. And now I can grab just that. Just like that. Or I can use my lasso tool under my small selection tool and grab just this vector. Copy it and then paste it into this. Right. So this one gives me a little bit more to work with than this one, but it still needs help. So once you're in Illustrator, you can use this lasso tool again. I'm going to get rid of this one. And I'm going to move this one onto its own layer. Remember, you can use layers organizationally. So now I have each word on its own layer. Man up here, and then Tikor here. So good with man up, going to lock that. How can I modify this, smooth it out, clean it up? My favorite tool, do you guys remember what it is in Illustrator? I do love the blob brush. It's my second favorite tool. That's my favorite tool for digital inking. My favorite general tool is, is the pencil tool. Because with the pencil tool, I can just, with magic scissors, make everything what I want. So for instance, if I want this highlight to actually have a highlight, I can expand it with the pencil tool on the inside. If I want to smooth it out, I can double click on the pencil, set it to be smooth, and I can just clean all of this up. If I wanted to do something like kind of fun and graffiti style, I can add drips, you know, with that pencil tool. I can just keep modifying. Then there are kind of all over ways I can simplify it too. When you get better with Illustrator, you start to marvel at all of the potential it has. So I can open up the star in the middle here with the pencil tool. But you have to start on the path and end on the path. And then there are some general ways you can play with it too that I'll show you. Just kind of all over ways. So I'm just using the command tool to get to my small selection tool. Because in order to use the pencil, you have to be able to see the anchor points. Now the other tool that's sometimes useful is the eraser. The eraser you cannot set to be smooth, but you can use it to break up vectors. So you see how the highlight is, is bleeding into the edge of the O. If I use the eraser tool, it will disconnect it, and then I can use the pencil tool to redraw these shapes and smooth it out. So 
So we have a lot of control of type.